Goldman Sachs economists have taken up the daunting task of predicting the path of the world economy through 2075. Among the highlights, they see global growth on a declining path. I thought these were highlights. Averaging just under 3% a year over the next decade. That's down from 3.6% in the decade before the financial crisis. Let's get other details now uh, on this ambitious project. Kevin Daly joins us, co-head of CEMIA e uh, Economics at Goldman Sachs. That's uh, uh, central Eastern Europe, Middle East, Africa, and uh, perhaps some other places uh, beyond. Kevin, very nice to have you with us. Good to see you, Anna. Uh, so, so why 2075? Why embark on this project? So, I mean, this is an extension of the original work uh, by Jim O'Neill and team on, on the BRICS uh, projections, which he first made uh, 20 years ago with his colleagues. Um, they originally projected out to uh, 2050, and as it's you know close to 10, 20 years on from those original projections, we thought we'd extend it further to, mm. to see 50 years into the future. Is, is, de is declining population growth one of the biggest assumptions you make here and, and one of the, uh, the biggest pieces, one of the biggest assumptions that has an impact, I suppose, on where the future economy um, goes? Absolutely. So one of, you know, the, the key themes, you know, one of the key themes that you highlighted in the introduction is, is we do see slower growth over time. Uh, much, most of that slowdown is driven by slower population growth. Population growth has already fallen from around 2% per year uh, around 50 years ago to 1% percent per year now. The UN projects that it will fall to close to zero by 2075. And even the quite emerging markets with the population um, growth. Well, China yeah. in particular, for yes. instance, you see a, a, quite a rapid slowdown now. Now, within the piece, we describe this as a, a so-called good problem to have in as mm. much as, you know, for long-term environmental sustainability, we do need population c control. But nevertheless, it will present some pretty challenging uh, economic challenges for, for economies dealing with population aging, dealing with the slowdown and growth that that involves. Okay, Matt, jump in. Well, it just shows you how quickly concerns can change, right? Because I remember, I mean, Bad Religion put out a song about 20 years ago called 10 in 2010. They were so worried about an explosion of population growth. And now we're worried about the opposite. Um, does this? I would. I wouldn't say just. Just. All, I wouldn't say we're worried about it. I mean, I. I, it, I do think. It, as I say, I do think it is a, a necessary evil in some sense over time that we do get population control. Uh, you know, for environmental sustainability. What is interesting, though, is that not only are we seeing a slowdown in population growth, but actually the projections over time from the UN are also slowing. So they previously saw uh, population rising to 11 billion by the end of this. Uh, by the end of this decade. Now they see it peaking at around 10 billion and over time those projections are now declining. You know, this flies in the face though of my uh, vision for the future, my, my Wally world vision where the robots and the AI are doing all the work so we humans just like lounge around. Um, what you're, the picture you're painting is more like one we're seeing in the JOLTS data, right? Where we have millions, maybe even tens of millions of job openings that can't be filled. Is that, um, is that what we're looking at? No, I think, I mean, I should emphasize that this is that there is a lot, I, uh, Wally, I mean, it was, a, it was a, a great film, a somewhat dystopian vision of the future, though, so I'm not sure that's uh, uh, something we should be hoping for. But the or point being for. the tech does all the work for us, Kevin, and you're saying that the, a, a slow labor force is a problem. Yeah, but I mean, we do see productivity growth over time, and and I, you know, it, within any exercise such as this, we should, you know, emphasise the uncertainty inherent in, in any long-term prediction of, of this kind. One of the advantages, however, of making these long-term forecasts is that we exclude a lot of the, you know, cyclical uh, uncertainty that you know that that we think about pretty much in your show today. You've mm. sp spent a lot of time talking about China, COVID reopening. I mean, that is. You know how China reopens uh, to COVID. Um, you know whether that process goes well is critically important uh, for next year's uh, growth in, in China. But it's much less important uh, for where GDP growth will be in 10 yeah. or 15 or 20 years' time. And that's one of the advantages of looking within this modelling at you know things like labour dynamics, capital dynamics, and productivity, which uh, computerisation and robotics will will influence over okay. time. Well, let's go to that in our conversation then. 
because, uh, you know, it, I, I started looking at what you're saying about population and then thought, well, do we need a new economic model here? Because if growth is driven by population increases or productivity growth, if we can't rely so much on the former, we have to rely a lot more on the latter. Is that what the next 25 years look like? And that's what people have to get right. Yes. And, uh, you know, productivity is always is always critical to growth. And, and some of the slowdown we've seen over the last 10 years, some of it has been due to population, but some has also been due to slower productivity. And, and one of the challenges you know, that we face going forward, one of the key risks that we highlight uh, within the piece is uh, you know, there, there is now a battle against globalization, resistance to globalization. We argue within the piece that globalization has been very good uh, in terms of boosting EM income levels and therefore reducing global income inequality. But it probably has been associated as well with the rise of, of local inequality yeah, within, so within, nations. Within, within nation inequality. And that has resulted in an understandable backlash against globalization, which you know policymakers need, need to address, need to focus on. And it is one of the risks going forward that you will, you know, this backlash against globalization, an increase in populism, an increase in localization will reduce trade and reduce productivity growth over time. Um, but hopefully, you know, we've been relatively cautious in our productivity assumptions within the model. So I think there are risks both to the upside and to the downside. But as a central case, we do see sl slightly slower productivity growth.